Let's play a game. It's called Find the Milling Machine. Hello everyone and welcome to a new Proxon MF70 upgrade. I don't really know where to start with this one, mainly because this is not the typical build video. This is a project which I've done a long time ago and the things you're about to see, I've had them for a while now. This is more of a presentation video, just showing off. If you have one of these micro milling machines, Chances are you live in an apartment like me, otherwise you probably would have bought one of the bigger, meaner machines out there. Like many of you, I don't have a garage and real estate is at a premium. My main cave is just a regular room in my apartment, so right from the beginning I had to keep the footprint of the Proxon to a minimum. That includes mainly the noise and the chips. Yes, I place a lot of value on the happiness of my neighbors and that of my better half. So, first thing to do was to make an enclosure for my milling machine. The main concern here was to try and integrate it with the rest of the furniture. The case is made of regular particle board like this IKEA bench in which it sits. The dimensions are chosen to allow for the full travel in all of the axes. In the end, even though the Proxon is really small, the box came out rather large. The front panel is detachable and is held in place with magnets. I've 3D printed these fixtures to keep the magnets positioned. They are neodymium disc magnets, so they are quite strong. I've left a small opening for a window to be able to look inside from time to time to see if everything is going well. For chip evacuation I don't have compressed air, so I use this 3D printed fan on the chuck. All I can tell you is that at 20,000 RPM it really blows a lot of air. So, the case keeps it from turning my apartment into a metallic cloud of aluminum chips, but I also needed a way to keep the ways and the lead screws clean. The obvious way would have been to use some of these bellow covers, which you usually find on milling machines. I don't know how, at the time, I didn't think it would be possible to get free movement in the X and Y direction with these. Now that I think of it, it wouldn't have been too difficult, but well, I also had this obsession that the covers should be absolutely airtight. So I ended up making it from fabric. Now the piece of fabric was cut a little bit bigger to allow for the bed travel. It attaches to the sides of the case using these velcro strips, which are sewn on all four sides. In the center, it is fixed to the table using some aluminum profiles. For the first iteration, I used double-sided adhesive tape to fix the fabric to the aluminum profiles, but this time I'm going with super glue. Once this is done, the whole thing is fixed to the X and Y table using these small screws which I scavenged from older computers. They go in the 3D printed parts. Ta-da! Now, back to the case. In the back, 
I've made provisions for the electronics. A computer fan provides cooling for the Arduino and the drivers and their power supply. The machine sits on a foam mat to limit the noise transmission to the case. The electronics go inside a separate box. I went the lazy way and used the food container, so I wouldn't exactly call it an electronics cabinet. The fan circulates the air directly with the outside, completely isolated from the interior of the enclosure. As I said, the textile protection is fixed to a wooden frame using velcro tape. One side was sewn to the fabric and the other side was glued to the frame. This allows for easy removal when necessary. For the final step, I covered the interior of this case with foam in an effort to absorb as much of the noise while it's still inside before it goes outside and ruins my neighbor's nap. Once more I went the cheap and dirty way and used the foam from an old mattress. If you want a more elegant solution you can throw some money and buy some of these dedicated acoustic panels if you feel you haven't spent enough money on this thing already. Right. I don't have any reliable means of measuring the noise level, but I think the difference is quite obvious. I think this is about it. You can make your own enclosure that suits your needs and fits the space at your disposal. In any case, I hope you found some useful ideas in this video. See you soon!